Join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining me today in the broadcast. My Bible is open again to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, we're asking the question, how can I know my faith is great faith? How can I know my faith is great faith? We'll be answering that again today as we did uh, began yesterday and we'll continue tomorrow. How can I know my faith is great faith? We're answering that from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. As you're getting your Bible open, also find something to write on and write with. I say this because right now I am really urging you, if uh, you are a person who already uses tracks, and especially if you're one who likes to use your tracks, uh, put tracks in your Christmas cards, it is time for you to contact us and say, I need some tracks for my Christmas cards. Now, we have some tracks that really would work well. One in particular is called The Gift. And on the front cover of this track is a gift. It's a wrapped up gift, beautiful bow and so on. Now, let me say, if you are new to this broad, uh, program, uh, Bible Track Echoes is the radio side of Bible Tracks Incorporated. We have since 1938 been sending out gospel tracks all over the world free of charge. We send them out in different languages. We, You heard me right. We give our tracks away. Let us give you some and help you share the gospel of Christ during the upcoming Christmas season. Now, if you have never ordered from us, contact us. If you have ordered from us, it's time to get your Christmas tracks. If you uh, do not know how to contact us, there are three ways. Number one, you can wait to the end of the broadcast and our announcer will give you our mailing address. But he will not give you the other two ways, which is the telephone and using the internet. Let me give you those right now. You can call us on the telephone by calling area code 309-828-6888. I'm going to give that telephone number again. Now, there's somebody that stands by Central Standard Time from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. Otherwise, you'll have to leave us a message on our voice answer machine. Now, let me give you the telephone number again. It's area code 309-828-6888. Or you can use the internet. You take the name of our ministry, which is Bible Tracks, Inc. Inc. is short for incorporated, all right? You run those words together, Bible Tracks, Inc., at juno.com. That's our email address, Bible Tracks Inc. at juno. Juno is spelled J U N O dot C O M. Bible Tracks Inc. at juno.com. Or you can go to our website, which is Bible Tracks Inc. dot O R G. That's our website. All right. Matthew chapter 15, we began reading yesterday at verse 21, this woman, this Gentile woman, who Jesus declares to be a woman of great faith. We said that her faith endured five tests. Uh, we also said that we are using this woman's uh, story and her episode here, since she is a woman of great faith, we know she is because Jesus said so, we want to lay her story out, and then I want you and I want me, frankly, to lay my life and my faith alongside of her and see, do I measure up, am I a man, or in your case, perhaps a woman or a teenager of great faith? She endured five tests, her faith did. Would Mark Smith's faith and uh, endure these five tests. If our faith is found lacking, then let's take an open step, a specific action designed to upgrade our faith. Yesterday, we saw here in verses 22 that her faith endured the test of trouble, her daughter's demon possessed. And if you were not listening yesterday, by the way, you can go to our website and re-listen to yesterday's broadcast, but her daughter, this woman's daughter, this Gentile woman's daughter was demon possessed. And she was demon possessed probably because she had gotten messed up and mixed up in her mother's old religion. But by this time, her mother had 
perhaps seen, but at least heard of the miracles of Christ and knew that the only one that could help her was God, was this man named Jesus. My friend, there are a whole lot of issues in life that you and I can solve by throwing money at the problem. You need a new tire in your car? Go buy one. But my friend, sometimes we don't have money even for a tire for a car or for the next meal. Trust me, I do understand that. Most of you out out there understand what it's like to have no resources and have lots of needs going on. And we're in trouble. But does trouble drive us to God or drive us away from God? Her trouble drove her to God. Glory, glory to God for people whose faith endures the test of trouble. Rather than running away from God, they run to God. Second test, the second test of this woman's uh, life, of her faith, that proved that she was a woman of great faith was this. Great faith endures the test of unanswered prayer. Test number one was great faith endures the test of trouble. Test number two is great faith endures the test of unanswered prayer. She comes in verse 22 and cries out after Jesus, but look at verse 23. And he answered her, not a word. Jesus Christ, the tender, loving, compassionate Savior, doesn't respond. You say, well, that doesn't sound like the the God that I worship. Well, frankly, it sounds just like the God that we worship. Let me remind you that some of the greatest people in Scripture endured times of silence where they had to wait and wait and wait upon God. You don't remember them? Let me remind you. How about Abraham? Abraham had to endure 17 years of God's silence before the answer to the to the promise that God made him about a son. 17 years. Uh, Daniel was praying to God. He had to wait three weeks before God responded. Joseph was in prison and was given the chance to to interpret dreams. And Joseph thought, now uh, when you go back to see Pharaoh, tell him who interpreted these things. And and they said, yeah, we will. But he was left lingering and languishing for two more years of silence. Moses goes into the backside of the desert and he waits for God and doesn't hear for God for 40 years. Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus was sick, nigh unto death. They sent for Jesus, but Jesus is silent. He doesn't come. Oh, my friend, all kinds of godly people have endured the silence and, the, and had to wait and wait and wait upon God. You cannot figure out God or put God in your box. I cannot put God in my box and make God do things the way I think, or you cannot make God do things the way you think he ought to do them. His ways are not your ways or my ways. They're too beyond, they're so far beyond our ability to comprehend what God is doing. But let me remind you of these words from the story where Jesus does raise Lazarus from the dead after Mary and Martha waited four days. John 11, verse 40 said, Jesus said unto her, said I not unto you that if you believe, would believe, you should see the glory of God. I do know this, that the waiting times of God, the waiting times are for God's glory to be seen but God's glory is not seen on your schedule or mine. Frankly, sometimes God waits because you and I are, are struggling with issues of, of unsurrenderedness or sin in our life that we're not willing to repent of. And God says, if you regard, if, if you regard iniquity in your heart, I'll not hear you. That's what he says in Psalm 66. Well, her trouble at this stage was God's silence. How does she respond to this? She doesn't go away from God frustrated and say, well, if that's the way God's going to treat me, then I'm just going to not ever call out to him again. Oh, my friend, how many times even people who really have received Jesus Christ as Savior are true saints of God have become frustrated because God does not work on their time schedule. The Bible says this in Isaiah 40. Remember this verse? They that wait upon the Lord shall what? That's right. Renew their strength. Has God got you in a waiting period? Now, some people are are confused. They think that waiting on God is I'm going to sit here and twiddle my thumbs until God does something. No, 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 no. The Hebrew word wait means that you and I intertwine our life. How do we intertwine our life? When we stay in prayer and say, Lord, what is your will? 
We need to pray for the will of God. That's what Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 says. Paul said, I'm praying that you would know the will of God. Let's pray. Lord, what is your will? I'm waiting upon you. Reveal your will, but also to intertwine, to wait in God means that we're going to intertwine our life in the word of God. Who are going to intertwine our life in praying, continuing to pray and continuing to seek God's word. This lady believed that if she would continue to beseech the Lord Jesus Christ, that something would happen. My friend, what is your trouble? Is your faith enduring the test of unanswered prayer in the silence of God? There's a, another test here, a third test of this woman uh, of great faith. And great faith endures the test of dispassionate disciples. Verse 23 says, and he answered and said, not, answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him. That's Jesus saying, send her away for she cries after us. They were bothered by her. Great faith endures the test of dispassionate disciples. What was her trouble? Others, the trouble, her trouble was that some of the followers of Jesus Christ thought she was plainly a nuisance. They were bothered by her and wished she were gone. A number of years ago, a, a pastor, pastor in, uh, in New Mexico, was his church was going through a time of great growth, but it was great growth because a number of people were coming to know Jesus Christ from the lower income stratus of his town. And it was causing some real hardship on the church and the people there, and some people were having to shift around and, and add new Sunday school classes and so on. And frankly, some of the old stalwarts of the church were getting frustrated and wished these people would quit coming. The pastor put this uh, uh, poem that he wrote. Uh, I'm not sure whether he put it in the bulletin or quoted it, but this is the poem he wrote. It goes like this. If it hurts, send them away. If it costs money, send them away. If it means sacrifice, send them away. If it means adding more nursery staff, send them away. If it means double services, send them away. If it means more Sunday school classes, send them away. I've added a couple of my own to his list here. My, I put down, if it means sitting in the services with unruly children, then send them away. If it means sitting closer to the front rather than my normal seat, then please send them away. We get very upset about some petty issues sometimes. Her trouble was others viewed her as being a bother. Oh, my friend, you know what her response was? She continued to cry in verse 22. She continued to cry. This is a cry not of tears, but of making her voice heard before the person of Jesus Christ. Daniel did this. Joseph did this. Abraham did this. Jesus said this in Luke 18. He spoke this parable to this end that man ought always to pray and not faint. My friend, has the trouble that you're in or the trouble that you faced the last time, did it cause you to stop praying and stop seeking the face and stop intertwining your life in God? If it did, you failed. If Mark Smith does it, I fail the test of great faith. Perhaps your step of growing and becoming a person of great faith is to stay on your face and your knees before God in prayer. My friend, perhaps the trouble you're in is brought into your life by a gracious God that you might see that you need him to solve your sin problem. You cannot fix it. Only Jesus can wash away your sin. You today perhaps need to bow your head and heart and believe in Christ and ask him to save you of all your sin. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated. Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.